Hi, welcome to Smeester's Corner. I'm Adam Smeester. Today's topic is caring about yourself or loving yourself, which is really hard and all of us could probably do a better job and some of us need to do a much better job. So let's get into it. The famous psychologist Jordan Peterson says, you have to treat yourself like you're someone you're responsible for taking care of. Just like you would a friend, just like you would a family member, you have to treat yourself the same way you would treat them. Well, what's so important about that? Here's what I tell my students. You will never be able to be loved the way you want to be loved unless you love yourself first. If you don't love yourself or if you can't care about yourself, there's going to be a void because the only person that can fill that void is you. If there is that void, some people don't feel comfortable enough or want to or know how to fill that void, so they turn to external things because they can't fill that void internally, which is where it has to be filled. So they look to other things. They look to fill that void through love, relationships, success, or they turn to darker areas like drugs, alcohol, sex, all to make themselves either numb the pain of not being able to love themselves or to fill the void of not being able to love themselves. What can happen sometimes is you can either just stay away from relationships totally or you will cycle through them because you're, uh, unbeknownst to you, kind of sabotaging them. Um, and a lot of the issue is you, even though you think it's the other person. So you'll say to yourself, well, I guess it just didn't work out. This isn't working. I don't have the feelings that I should. And you'll tell yourself, they're just not the one for me when really the problem's you, the problem's not them. So then you just break up with them and you find somebody else and then the cycle goes on. Only you can fill that void. So if you want to start loving yourself more or want to start caring about yourself more, how do you do that? Because that's what some people would go, I don't even know how to start doing that. Well, there's six things that you can start doing fairly soon. Number one, don't be so hard on yourself. Allow yourself to make mistakes. And when you do make mistakes, have some grace. Okay. And the thing about making mistakes is allow it just to be a mistake instead of trying to find out what the mistake says about you. So like, say you fail at something, the message shouldn't be, oh, I'm dumb. And here's what that says about me that I'm dumb. Maybe you just didn't study hard enough. So give yourself some grace. Number two, forgive yourself. So maybe you've made some really stupid decisions. Forgive yourself for that. You got to move on from it. And that's how you move on is you forgive yourself. One of the most common ways people beat themselves up is if they think they've allowed themselves to be hurt and they can't forgive themselves or you just don't trust yourself anymore because I thought this person cared about me. They apparently didn't as much as I thought they did. So I don't trust myself to make decisions around relationships anymore. So you don't trust yourself. If you did that, try to forgive yourself for it. Number three, stop comparing. Stop comparing yourself to other people. They say comparison is the thief of happiness. And it's the thief of you finding out who you truly are. Number four, don't take other people's opinions so seriously. Start figuring out what you think about yourself. Don't make up your identity about what other people think about you or all you care about is what, how other people perceive you. Start to figure out how you perceive yourself and what you think of yourself. And then you can start figuring out how do I want to be? Who's the person that I want to be? And then you can start trying to meet that goal. Number five, develop some virtues to live by, like some sort of moral code that you live by. So stand up for something. That makes you feel better when you stand up for something that will solidify some decisions instead of going back and forth. And what should I do? If you have something to live by or some sort of code, it will make those decisions a little easier. For example, some of mine are to sacrifice. So don't be selfish. I need to sacrifice for my family. Work on myself, self-improvement. Never stop working on yourself. Never be satisfied for where you are. Always try to be working on yourself and becoming better. Advocate and stand up for myself. Be able to tell the truth. Don't be scared of being able to tr tell the truth and what I think about an issue because what if people don't like me based on my opinion? You can. You don't have to be a firebrand about it and be in people's faces about it. You can do it softly, 
but at least stand up for what you believe sometimes. That takes courage. And you always feel better when you are a person that has some courage. And then the one that I've always had is do my best. If my name's going to be attached to something that I do, and people are going to know who, who did that thing, I want to do my best at that. Number six, respect yourself, which means a few things. First of all, you have to know that you deserve dignity and respect. If you don't think that, you, you have to kind of try to shift your mind and start telling yourself that until you start believing it. Another way you can do that is celebrate your accomplishments. Don't minimize your accomplishments all the time. Start celebrating them and think, yeah, I did a good job. And that's okay to be happy about it. Do things that are respectable. Don't do things that disrespect yourself. Don't be the guy that just does anything for a laugh. Don't be that guy. Because sometimes people are, a lot of times people are going to be laughing at you and not with you. But because you're desperate for attention, you're going to tell yourself they're laughing with you. So those are some things you can do to care about yourself more or to love yourself more. Maybe you've developed a little small voice or maybe it's a big voice inside of you that tells you that you can't do it or is overly critical. Maybe you have that little voice. Maybe stop listening to that voice. Maybe that little voice always finds someone better than you. And so you end up telling yourself, oh, well, what's the point of trying? I'll never be whoever that person is. Or maybe you tell yourself, well, in 100 years, what's it going to matter? That's a cheap trick to trick yourself into not caring about yourself. That's a cheap trick. You matter because you're alive. And because you're alive, you have value. You have to be able to wrap your mind around that. Do you believe in human rights in other countries or around the world? You probably do. So why wouldn't you believe that you have value? You have value. So the question is, what are you going to do with that? Eventually, you have to come to terms with who you are and you have to be okay with that. Even if you don't believe it, just tell yourself that eventually you'll start to believe it. Growing up, I really struggled with the way I was built because I was built as a tall, slender guy who was really skinny and all my friends were athletes and a lot of them were bigger than me, they were more muscular than me, and that was kind of hard for me. And I have really long arms, and they're hard to get to be big. And so I go to the gym a lot, and I see these guys that are just, you know, built stout. And for the longest time, I thought to myself, work harder, work harder, be that guy, be that guy, be that guy. When really what I had to do is accept my body type and, be, and say to myself, okay, I'm never going to be that. I'm never going to look like that guy, and that's okay. You have to be okay with your body. You have to be okay with your mind. Maybe you're not the smartest person in the room. That's okay. You have to be okay with your personality. Maybe you're not the most outgoing person. Maybe you're kind of quiet. Maybe you're kind of shy. That's okay. You can. Those are things that you can work on. Maybe you're not the funniest person in the room. That's okay too. If you're not okay with who you are, people are going to realize that. It'll be kind of obvious whether you try to hide it or not. So if you're not being truly you and you're not being truly you because you're trying to get someone else to like you more. Once they start liking you, they're not liking you for you. That's the trick. So love yourself first, start working on that, and then you can be you once you start loving yourself. You will give yourself permission to be you. When you can be you, you will start making friendships with other people that want to be around you for you because of who you are you will start forming relationships. And those people will love you for you. And that is what makes a life worth living. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.